Unlike most tools when you crop, Lightroom doesn't actually crop to a specific size. Rather, it's just a ratio or shape. The size, the relative size when you print the file or display it or create it for the web, is actually generated when you export the file from Lightroom. Remember, when working in Lightroom, you're working with the parametric image editor, which means it's making adjustments, but it's not actually changing the original file. You have to export that file to apply the changes or make a conversion in format or resolution. Let me go ahead and show you this. Let's choose the next image we have here in our list. If your list is sorted differently, just press G for grid view and make sure that you're sorting here by file name. All right. We've got this image selected. I've already applied a crop to it, and I could check that by pressing the R key. And if needed, we could tighten that up a little bit to taste. Now, I want to export this. I notice in this case that I'm set to the original aspect ratio, and that's fine. Let's go ahead and be a little bit more specific here and switch this to a five by seven print. You'll see the shape is just a little bit different. And I'll press the return key. Now I'll go to export, file, export. A new dialog box comes up. From the export to, choose hard drive in the pop-up list. Now you need to make a few decisions. The first is where you're gonna save it. You could choose a specific folder. For example, I'll choose and save this to a new folder on my desktop called exports. And I'll choose that location. I'm going to choose from the file naming, file name underscore edit. This way it keeps the same original file name, but adds an underscore indicating that it's been modified. Now I need to just specify a few other options. Let's stick with a TIFF file for printing. And we now need to resize the image. You'll notice a variety of options, including long edge or short edge and many more. The long edge or the short edge deal with which side is going to be longer. So with a portrait aspect ratio, it's going to be the vertical edge. This is fine if you're trying to size to something specific, like a piece of paper. You can also specify both if you're wanting to be really specific. In this case, I'll choose to do width and height. And now we need to assign a resolution. Well, this is a 5 by 7. So that means that the height in this case for the vertical image should be 2100 pixels. This resolution is a combination of some simple math. You need to think about the delivery method. When I'm delivering to a printed file, I'm probably going somewhere between 240 pixels per inch and 300 pixels per inch to get a high quality print. When we're going to something like a display, it's less important for the actual pixels per inch, but rather the total pixel count. For example, a high definition TV is gonna be 1,920 pixels wide and 1,080 pixels tall. Since this is a printed file, a five by seven, I'm gonna put the width in here at 1,500 pixels, which is 300 pixels per inch times the five inches, and 2,100 pixels for the height, seven inches times 300 pixels per inch. I'll also choose to sharpen for paper here, with a standard amount and click export. Now a new file is generated. You can see it there in the upper corner, it tracked the progress very quickly. Let's do one more. In this case, I'll press the R key for crop and I'm gonna set the aspect ratio to 16 by nine for television. Now let's go to export again, file, export. We'll go to hard drive as well, but this time we're gonna generate a JPEG file and we'll keep that at about 80% quality. This is a nice balance of size to quality. We'll go to the sRGB space here for use on computer displays. And we're gonna size this to fit a PowerPoint presentation that's using a high definition display. So 1920 width by 1080 pixels high. I don't need to worry about the resolution here as that's really only a print setting. I'll choose to sharpen for the screen and leave it at a standard amount and click export. Again, you'll see the export there in the upper corner. It tracks the progress. Now, if I go to that folder on the desktop, you'll see we have both files. Let's make this a little bit bigger. 
Here, I see my dimensions, 1500 by 2100 at 300 pixels per inch. If I open this up, this file's very ready for printing. Here's the JPEG file for the screen, 1920 by 1080. And this image is all set for most computer displays. Taking control over the export settings is very important. And while it may seem a little bit confusing at first, once you get familiar with some of your standard delivery sizes, it's pretty straightforward. In most cases, if you're exporting for print, just think about that common math, 300 pixels per inch multiplied by the dimensions that you're trying to print. This combines with the crop tool overlay to get precise results. So if you skipped the previous movie, make sure you go back and watch that on cropping. If you're going out to a computer display, smartphone, tablet, etc., it's more about the total pixel count. And most social media platforms and websites are gonna work with maximum resolutions of about 2000 pixels wide, although we are seeing people occasionally going with higher pixel counts if they're doing large, high quality websites or full screen images. All right, now that you've got the hang of this, let's go on to our next technique.